This video was sponsored by Bambi Lab. So about two weeks ago we built the project panel which is basically this slate of wood on monitor drums with a bunch of 3D printed inserts on there and a lot of the tools that I would use for a 3D print project or a reverse engineering project. And it's been working out really quite nicely and it sparked a new idea because somebody in the comments asked me like why not just have like a pegboard like pretty much everybody else has. And the reason for that was actually for the camera angles, right? So I shoot a lot of content. It's really useful if the camera angle can just shoot over the top of it. And it's been in my head for quite a long time now, but I'd like to create the ultimate fabrication desk setup, which we did once before, but it was more like a standard solution. This time, you know, completely custom built. Everything needs to be super quickly accessible, but also have the cameras built in so that we can really quickly flick a switch and then record a YouTube video or create something that I want to build. And so that's why I'm creating the panels first, because I'm not entirely sure how much panels we actually need. And that will impact the size of the actual desk setup as a whole. So in this episode, we're building the teardown panel. In my content, usually I have a piece of tech or something and then I break it apart and then I really print something new for it. So the teardown panel will allow us to accommodate all of the little nuts, all of the bolts, and maybe the housing and that kind of stuff until the project is actually finished. I really enjoy taking stuff apart and then seeing how the internals actually function. You get like new inflection points for where you want to go in the project. And the build of this box was pretty similar to the last version, so I'm not going to go into too much details on that. And I ordered some monos rams because I've been running out of some, you know, piston monos rams. These, you can adjust them enough to where it won't like shoot up constantly. And they look really quite decent as well, but they're not that long, so they don't have a lot of reach. And in terms of the build of the boxes themselves, I kind of like the rough look of them. So I've sanded them down earlier. And then you can see those exposed glue layers from the multiplex, which I don't necessarily mind, but if you'd like to go for a completely clean look, you can always fill up some gaps with some wood filler and then paint them completely white or black or whatever. And then it looks really quite decent. So I actually built two of these panels. The other one is for a 3D scanner and we'll be building that in the next episode. For now though, I can actually put the long panel in between it because the desk setup isn't big enough for that but there's quite a lot of range of motion in these panels so you can put them in whatever position you want to and that could be really quite useful if you have something really big that you want to place on a desk setup and the panel doesn't get in the way, you can just push it out, out of the way uh, especially for creating videos as well, if you want to shine a light underneath it you can lift it up a little bit, maybe even twist it that way In terms of what we're actually putting on this panel, I bought a Bosch Go 3 which is an electric screwdriver and this one's actually USB-C rechargeable so the previous Bosch screwdriver which I took apart and built something new out of had micro USB but this one is actually really quite nice I'm not taking this one apart though because I just want it to be you know, as it is and if it breaks then we can still send it back actually it comes in this really nice little carrying case which would be really useful if you want to keep it in your bag or something like that sadly we're not using that case I'm integrating it in a way where you know you can really quickly grab it and before I actually integrated it I was considering having it fall on the USB-C port so that it would be always charged and never really out of battery if you want to use it quickly. I opted against it because the entire body is round so it would be really difficult to line that up properly as it doesn't like, you know, fall into place in a specific way. If you'd like access to the 3D scans that I make or all of the designs that I make, you can check out my Patreon page, that really helps out the channel. And a free way of supporting me is just like subscribing to the channel or leaving a like, leaving a comment. And I hope you enjoyed the video so far at least. Now in terms of the integration for the Bosch Go 3, I want it to just drop into place so it's a really quite simple integration over here. And I'll leave a little gap at the side of it so that a USB-C cable can come through and then actually plug in if we need that. But the way I want to actually utilize it is just like grab it and then you're ready to go, right? Now we do actually have a bunch of drill bits on the other panel, but I want this to be like self-contained little system so that we can move them around. So if I want this panel to be somewhere else, in a different room for example, then it still needs to function even if the other panel is not there. So I want to put some draw bits on here, I still have that Amazon Basics set, and I'm just reutilizing the design of the previous one. With all of the 3D scans in a single project on the iPad Pro, it does seem to get a little bit slower, so I have to be a little bit conservative with how much you pump into a single project. But the design came out looking pretty clean, it's not too fancy in any regard. So we can send it off to the 3D printer, which brings us to the sponsor of today's video, which is Bambi Lab. Bamboo Lab offers a variety of 3D printers ranging from the A1 Mini all the way up to the HDD and in this project we're using the A1. I really enjoy this 3D printer for the time-lapse features so once you've uploaded the file, sliced it and then selected which filament you want to use for this project you can enable the time-lapse feature and it records the time-lapse with the internal camera but you can also record it with an external camera because the print head goes to a preset position over there and it just looks really great on camera as well. 
But most importantly, the print quality on these machines is just really awesome as well. So Bamboo Lab has a selection of their own filaments as well. You can choose to go for a refill or a full spool. And if you get a full spool, you get a plastic component with it as well. But once you have four of those plastic spools, then you can just go for refills after that. And the refills have a little NFC tag on the cone over here. So once you attach it to the MS unit, then the printer automatically recognizes which filament that is, and it optimizes a preset for that specific filament. Initially, I didn't really think that that would be too big of a deal, but actually having the printer be optimized for the specific filament that you're using with it is really quite important. And, you know, in hindsight, I think every single manufacturer should be doing this. It's just really smart of Bamboo Lab to integrate in that way. What's also really awesome about these three printers is the AMS unit. So normally you'd use them for multicolored prints, but you could also use them for support structures. So if you print a support structure in a different filament from the actual like main body of the, the thing that you're printing, then it's a lot easier to remove, even though I've never had any issue with removing the support structures. But somebody pointed that out in the comment section. I was really intrigued by this. Anyway, uh, special thanks to Bamboo Lab for sponsoring this video. Really appreciate it. I've left some links in the description down below. Definitely check them out. So the 3D prints came out looking really quite nice. I printed it in PET GHF, which is a little bit cheaper than PLA, but it's the same kind of stuff. So it's the same kind of quality. A little bit stronger, actually, I think, as well. Over the past couple of projects, I've also been using quite a lot of magnets, and the ones that I've found which work the best for bit storage is actually these 3mm by 10mm magnets. And those are really quite strong, so that per bit they're held in place really tight. I've tried larger ones like 50 by 10 mm magnets, which are easier to integrate, but they're not as strong as these. So initially it looks really quite wasteful that these panels are so thick with a bunch of room on the inside as well. But that has to do with the overall look of things later down the line, because we're also going to be having panels with like a Dremel or a soldering iron and that kind of thing. And those need power, so there'll be a power strip inside of these things. And I'd like that to be integrated straight away, so that not all of these panels have like, different whips and that kind of stuff. Pretty much the entire bit panel is the same, right? And for those bottom ones, the lighter ones, would have been nicer to make a specific row there, so that these would be a little bit sunken into the design itself. So when you're doing a teardown of a piece of kit, then usually there's a bunch of bolts that need to be separated if you want to put it back together, right? Finding those bolts in one mass like bucket is kind of a difficult thing to do. So I'd like to create a bunch of little mini buckets where we can separate all of those bolts that we encounter in a teardown process. But sometimes there's also some additional kit that you just need to store somewhere, doesn't need to be integrated fully. So this one actually reutilizes the bucket that I created for the desk setup a little while ago, but I took that one out to replace it with a stream deck and I still had this one laying around. But because these panels are a lot higher, there's some room at the top over there. So I 3D printed an additional little basket for it as well. So these Bosch electric screwdrivers actually have a push mechanism and you can't actually turn it off, which is kind of a shame, but as soon as you push in, the entire PCB moves backwards and there's a little switch at the top but then it activates the screwdriver, so. For the final bucket over here with all of the mini buckets, initially I wanted to go for a gridfinity system so that I could take all of the individual little buckets out, fill them up with little bolts and then push them back in there as well. But because I do a lot of woodworking projects, there's a bunch of dust floating all over the place and I know what's gonna happen to that. I'm not gonna put those things back into their spots. So there's gonna be a bunch that are just all over the place and eventually I just went for this really simple design two components, a bottom plate and a top plate, and a bottom plate actually accounts for the roundover, so you can grab the bolts a little bit easier. In hindsight, it might have also been worth it to mark all of the drawers, right? So drawer one, two, three, and four, and then so on and so forth, so that we can remember which bolts came from which component. But we'll see how this works out, and if it doesn't work out, then we can always reutilize it for something different. For this last panel, I also increased the width of all the edges, so that it will be friction fit in the design itself, because most of these panels aren't held in place by anything. And I thought I'd do that with glue, but then you can't really replace them that easily anymore either. So friction fit, I think that works out quite nicely. And I'm going to do this for all of the other panels later down the line as well. I think some of you might say this is totally overkill. And it seems like that as well. But if you consider like the desk setup that we're creating, we might also be able to do live streams on there. And for live streams, things just need to be super optimized. Otherwise, it's going to be incredibly boring. So I am happy we've built this one. Definitely also stay tuned for the next one where we're integrating a 3D scanner, some more technical things. And yeah, if you like this video, you might also like the Compute Box build series, which will pop up somewhere on the screen right now. So uh, I hope to see you in the next one.